Hello everyone and welcome to Lights Camera Podcast, a program dedicated to all those cinema lovers, whether it's series, movies, or both. My name is Sofia Erlet and I'm going to be your hostess for this program. In this first episode, we'll be talking about Netflix original series, 13 Reasons Why, a US series produced by Selena Gomez that is based on Jay Asher's 2007 young adult novel that goes by the same name. The show aired on March 31, 2017 on Netflix, who bought the rights to the book from Selena Gomez, who had earlier bought them to make a movie. Okay, so, 13 Reasons Why follows Clay Jensen, a 17-year-old boy who has received a package with some tapes, a map, and some instructions. Talk about elaborate plans, right? When Clay plays the first tapes, he realizes that it's Hannah Baker, a friend. Well, his crush, but we find out that later in the show. Hashtag spoiler. <laughs> Who made the decision to kill herself, and these tapes explain the reason that led to such event. Then we realize how the tapes work, which is basically that all people responsible for Hannah's death listen to all the tapes, and then in the end, they have to pass them on to the next person, and basically everyone has to know what was that they did and feel guilty, I guess. Because, you know, hashtag revenge, right, Hannah? Now, I imagine you're thinking what I'm thinking, or at least thought of it when you saw the, th- the series. What is happening? What did she gain from all this? Why did she use tape? Why didn't she just confront this in these individuals in person? Baleadas, two with everything, please. And please, add an orjata if you can. Truth is, I do recommend that you go and get something to eat or drink, some snacks. Even hit the bathroom if you need to, because we'll be here a while. Hannah. Hannah Baker. Don't adjust your you know, whatever device you're hearing this on. It's me. Live and in stereo. Okay. I think that at this point we've all th- seen 13 Reasons Why. And if you haven't, well, um, I don't know what you're doing listening to this podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. But I will give you a quick reminder of our characters and their and their actions. So let's go. So first of all, we have Justin Foley. He shares and blows out of context a picture of Hannah. Then we have Jessica Davis. She was her best friend, but stopped being her friend because she dated Alex and then Justin. Yeah. Then we have Alex Standall. He was her best friend. But he stopped being her friend because he published a best and worst of the class. Whatever. Then we have Tyler Down. He took photos of her without her consent and actually viralized a photo of her kissing Courtney. Later we have Courtney Crimson. She called her a lesbian and made people believe that she was actually a lesbian. So, girl... Then we have Marcos Cole. He was he was basically an ass to Hannah. He just tried taking advantage of her. Next we have Zach Dempsey. He apparently stole some comments out of her positive comments bag from some communications class. Okay. Then we have Ryan Shaver. He published a poem that Hannah wrote without her consent. We have Sherry that actually knocked down a stop sign. And because of that, Jeff got in an accident and died. We have Clay Jensen that... This is an interesting character because Hannah was in love with him and he was in love with Hannah. And I I don't really know why he's on the tapes, just to be clear. Then we have Bryce Walker, the actual villain of this series. He raped Hannah. We have Mr. Porter, the the, the counselor. Um, what he did is that he didn't run after her. And we have Tony Padilla. The, he was Hannah's secret keeper. You know? Okay. So now we know that there are many strange, good, and bad things with this series. And I will talk about all of them 
okay? So just to clarify, guys, just to clarify, these are my opinions, my personal opinions. Don't take them personally, okay? So I'm going to start off with, in my opinion, were some things that were actually wrong in this series. So with no further ado, let's go. Number one, the idea that Hannah took the time to record 13 tapes, decorate them, because she actually did some very nice decorating, leave clear instructions to Tony to make these guys understand what they did, it seems absurd to me. It makes it look as, as if she did everything that she did just to get revenge on them. You know, a part I thought that was really funny, it was when she said that when she finished recording the tapes, she felt more liberated, as if a weight had been lifted off her shoulders. Girl, of course you're gonna feel that! That usually happens when you talk about the things that are happening to you. That actually happens when you go to a shrink and tell him what's happening and talk about your issues. You feel a weight lifting off your shoulders. Girl, seriously? Number two, the way Hannah does nothing about the things that happen to her. It's stupid. Believe me. It makes me mad, and sometimes I even stop feeling empathy for her. You know, if Hannah was portrayed as a shy girl, it would make sense. But actually, Hannah in the series is portrayed as a funny, friendly, sarcastic girl with her head on her shoulder. With her head on her shoulder, sorry. So I don't understand why she did nothing about the many things that happened to her. Why didn't she face Zack directly and tell him like, Hey, yo, why are you taking out my comments out of my positive comment back thingy? Why didn't she stand up to Courtney and say like, Hey, girl, I I'm no lesbian. You know, I have nothing against lesbians, but I ain't no lesbian. Why didn't she clarify the picture situation, you know, with Justin, the picture that he sent out to the whole school, why didn't she just tell people like, huh, lol, I was just sliding down the slide and he took a picture of me, ha ha ha, she didn't, but ah, uh, the girl did have some ovaries to make 13 tapes and let them screw up other people's lives, you know, the joke, the joke tells itself, you know. Number three, for me, personally, Zack didn't deserve to be on the tapes, just as everyone thought that Clay didn't deserve to be on them either. Zack did nothing that justifies him being on the tapes. I still think that, you know, the whole taking out her comments out of the bag was kind of immature, but the only thing that Zack did that supposedly upset Hannah was that he wanted her to be her Valentine's Day, you know? And also, let's remember that Zack was there for Hannah after Marcus tried to force himself on her at Rosie's diner. And, you know, what was Hannah's response to Zack telling her that he wanted her to be her Valentine? Go the fuck away, Zack! And it wasn't like she said it only for him, like, Zack, just go away. No! She freaking yelled at him for everyone to listen. Everyone at Liberty High listened to what Hannah had to say to Zack. And of course, Zack got upset, and in response, he said, fuck you. You know? Number four, Hannah believes that people can read her mind. This woman sometimes makes me dizzy throughout the whole series. For example, in episode 9, the episode that describes Jessica's party, Clay and Hannah go up to Jessica's room. One thing leads to another, they're kissing, and it seems like they're going to make the devil's tango. You know what I mean? And then Hannah gets all uncomfortable and starts yelling at Clay five times time to go and leave her alone and literally after he leaves she says on the tape why did you have to go woman you screamed at him to leave 
What was the boy going to do? Stay? You know, guys, you who is listening to this, what would you do if we were kissing or you were kissing someone and they start yelling, leave me alone, go, please leave me alone. What would you do? You will leave, right? You know, this woman, this Hannah, she almost hit Clay telling him to go. Or in the last episode where she was talking to her supporter and she was kind of describing the whole rape situation with Bryce, Porter needed to know more things in order for him to proceed legally. He was asking questions and Hannah starts screaming, screaming like, no, it wasn't like that or no, you don't understand. And <sighs> Hannah. Darling, sweetie, baby, Porter is just doing his job. He's trying to follow protocol. He needs to know what happened. Instead, you just fucking scream and start standing up, which Porter tells her to sit down because he needs to know what happened. And the third time she stands up, Porter can't actually stop her because he can't have a student staying there against their will. And when she bursts out of his office, she says, he's not coming for me. Bitch, of course he's not coming after you. Number five. My next point is, is actually similar to the last point which is Hannah's manipulation of blaming everyone for her decision when we all know that in the end she was the one who killed herself okay so let me be clear about this uh, taking your life in the end is your decision you know in a homicide someone kills you you know, if I make the decision to kill myself, I'm doing it. If somebody brings a gun to my head and pulls the trigger, that's a homicide. Okay? This is something I need to be clear about. Because Hannah had reasons of why she took her life. But she goes around blaming everyone for her suicide. I mean... A lot of the things that happened to her weren't her fault. I mean, it wasn't her fault she got raped. It wasn't her fault uh, someone tried to take advantage of her. But in the end, she was the one who slit her wrists. You know, and I want to make this clear because in the series, you're actually taking the responsibility out of Hannah and putting it out on the other characters. And then everyone's like, oh, I killed Hannah, or no, you killed Hannah, or we killed Hannah. When in reality, she killed herself. You know, she, yes, she had her reasons, but in the end, she took the blade to her wrists. But, just I, as I have bad things to say about this series, I also have a few good things to say about it. So, let's go. Number one. Many people talk about how this um, series is too graphic and how this is not something that they should have done, which I am really opposed to. People usually like to block everything that bothers them. And I think the more we bring light to all those taboo issues that people don't want to talk about, the better. Since this, these generate discomfort, and the discomfort actually generates conversation. For example, a lot of people say that uh, the rape scenes uh, where Bryce rapes Jessica or where Bryce japes, rapes sorry, Hannah are very graphic. But we need to understand that this is actually happening in the real world. You know, a lot of women are getting sexually abused, are getting raped. So people need to talk about it. People need to feel in first-hand experience, maybe visually, what it's like for a woman, 
for women to be raped. Another scene that people found controversial was Hannah taking her life in the bathtub. So this is something I'm gonna talk like in a few minutes because it's it, it's a very important thing I want to talk about. But this scene is very strong, very powerful, and it's actually necessary because we need to see in first hand what it's like for a person when they drive them to suicide. Okay, so I do think that uh, the graphic scenes are important to tell the story, okay? Number two, Clay's conversation with Bryce. This is something real, you guys. The scene is really raw. The way Bryce talks about his actions as if they were something normal. And believe me, I like this because... This is something that also happens in real life. There are so many rapists or sexual predators who don't see their mistake. Like, they speak of their actions as if they were nothing. Like, they don't know the difference between consent and rape. So, I do actually think this is a very important scene. Because it's how a psychopath... Like Bryce explains to people that what he did wasn't rape. And like I said before, and I say it again, there are people out there who think that what they did isn't wrong. So I do think it's a pretty good scene and it's something really good about the series. Number three, the performances of Dylan Minnette and Katherine Langford. Dylan had already had an experience in acting in films and series such as Don't Breathe, Goosebumps, Prison Break, among others. His performance in 13 Reasons Why was actually quite good. I really liked the way he he performed as Clay Jensen. It was really amazing. And as for Katherine Lanford... This was her first time on the acting field, you know? This was her launch to stardom, and she actually did wonderful. She brought the character of Hannah Baker to life and did quite well at it. You know, kudos to you, Katherine Langford. Number four, the cinematography in the series. So, there's a popular opinion about the meaning they give to the color changes between the scenes that are flashbacks and the present day scenes. Many people even have this, like, philosophical theory that the flashback scenes are colored warmed because Hannah was there and it was warm and she was alive and everything was just amazing when she was there and in the present scenes you have this cold colored scenes you know and they say that it represents uh, a life without Hannah a life that is sad because she left well let me tell you you're wrong there's no philosophical background to the coloring of the scenes you know it's just good cinematography It's a more interesting way to tell the timelines of a story, you know, to make a difference between the flashbacks and the present. Now, there's something in which I'm quite neutral about. I feel like it isn't something good or bad, and it's the fact that they... They've removed the scene where Hannah takes her life. You know, I told you I was going to talk about this. Now, here's a fun fact. In the book, Hannah takes her life through an overdose. But the series wanted to do something more graphic, which had its positive and negative effect, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So, the removal of this scene was done just before the third season came out. And so, like I said, this decision has a positive and negative point. The positive thing was that many mental health experts said that this scene is very explicit and that it could actually trigger some suicidal thoughts to anyone, whether they had good or bad mental health. This is actually that something that I agree on, you know? 
a lot of the things in this series triggers a lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts, and this scene is actually pretty strong. If you if you've seen the series with the scene, you know the series is something strong, you know, and I actually do agree that uh, the removal of it was smart because we could avoid triggering people with suicidal thoughts. The negative side is that it takes away all the climax, the in the intensity of the scene where Clay is talking to Mr. Porter, explaining what Hannah did after talking to him. Clay starts explaining what Hannah did after uh, talking to Mr. Porter, that was she went home, she cleaned her room, she changed into some old clothes, she went into the bathroom and you know, you know what proceeds, right? And you know, when you hear it, when you hear Clay describing the scene, you feel like there's nothing missing, but when you're looking at it, when you're watching the series, there's actually a void there, you know, and that actually bothers me because we never get to the climax of the scene, because just when Clay says, and she killed herself alone, everything, like, he starts explaining the whole situation, the scene cuts where her mom, Hannah's mom, walks in the bathroom and finds her dead. You know, so I do think that we're missing the, the climax, the emotion of the scene. And I was actually pissed off and it actually bothered me a little since Selena Gomez in an interview talked about how difficult it was to shoot that scene since it was loaded with emotion and tension. And to see that they took that away from them, it was a little bit devastating. But like I said, maybe it was for the best because we are trying to prevent suicide and suicidal thoughts. So, eh, like I said, I'm very neutral in this. So in conclusion, 13 Reasons Why is a series that wanted to start a conversation in a campaign. And it did. The thing is, it didn't turn out the way we expected it to be or we wanted it to be. The campaign the series wanted to put together is basically raising awareness amongst people that basically they shouldn't be bullies. They, they shouldn't be, you know, shitty people. But I feel that this is not something that a series should be telling people to do. I mean, you don't need a series to tell you that you don't need to be a shitty person. You just do it. Because it's common human decency. But what the series did achieve is that it made people talk more about topics such as suicide, sexual abuse, substance abuse, school bullying, etc. So, at least they have that. So, this first season had the following scores that are the, the scores that are most taken into accountability by the critics and the public in general, you know. So, IMDB gave it a 7.7, .7, Metacritic gave it a 60% and it got a 78% in Rotten Tomatoes. So let me be clear, this is for season 1. Actually, every season has its own scores and it just it gets worse, guys. It gets it gets worse. So that's it for this up episode. I hope you liked it. What did you think of this first season of 13 Reasons Why? Was it good? Bad? Meh. Remember to follow Lights Camera Podcast on Instagram to be notified of the new content, to give me feedback on the podcast, or deciding what other series or movies I should talk about next time. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll tune in next week. Take care, drink lots of water, and keep consuming cinema. Bye!